Here on the T-Rex Lab channel, we occasionally invent things which aren't real, which means you can't have them. But uh, we have just this week invented something which is also not real, but you can have it. Introducing the T-Rex Quad, the perfect blend of form and function luxury and utility, beauty and brains. So, as I've already alluded to, the T-Rex Quad luxury tactical timepieces not real. Uh, we're not making them here, even in our fancy watchmaking area. Uh, but all the features of that particular timepiece are available to you virtually now in a Garmin watch face. For the last 15 or so years, I've been wearing these solar-powered quartz Citizen watches. They're amazing. I love them. They're almost unkillable and they last forever. But about two years ago, I switched to Garmin smartwatches for a couple reasons. One was uh, to see if we wanted to carry them at T-Rex. Uh, but the other reason was just to see if they offered enough features to where it was actually worth wearing something like this over what was already tried and tested. And you know that I am kind of a privacy and security guy. I would like something simple. And as things have gotten more complicated in the tech world, I kind of want more basic devices. So it's weird that I would switch to a smartwatch. However, the sheer amount of features that smartwatches have are pretty neat. The fact that this thing does health tracking, the fact that it uh, tells better time, the fact that it can figure out exactly when sunrise, sunset, what the phase of the moon is gonna be, as well as get GPS time. And on the more advanced watches have maps. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fascinating capability. But I have, after two years of testing, decided that there are ways that these watches can be slightly improved. And I've been spending a few months now designing our very own T-Rex Arms watch face. Obviously, there's a bunch of designs that don't look great and didn't go anywhere, but this last one that I drew actually had some promise. So it's kind of based a little bit on the Breitling Aerospace, which is a very cool watch. Breitling is a cool company that make cool watches. The Breitling Aerospace is an especially cool one, and we all know sketchy guys wear Breitlings. But the Aerospace is a hybrid design with an analog face and two digital fields. Uh, that's always intrigued me, and so I thought, what if we had for digital fields. And once I had initial design, I started to reach out to different third-party watch face developers. So this is a collaboration between T-Rex Arms and True Delta, who has made a bunch of really interesting watch faces, including a Breitling Aerospace uh, copy. So the T-Rex Quad is called that because it's got the four windows, but the most important feature is actually this solar disc right here. It's kind of an astrolabe or an equatorium or an ori, but we'll just call it the solar disc. This is really useful for me and potentially for you because you want to know how many hours of daylight you have in the day, and you also probably want to know how much moonlight you have at the night because you're out doing stuff in the evenings with your night vision or possibly filming content with your night vision, uh, like I occasionally am. So. Here is how this disc works. At the bottom is midnight and at the top is high noon. Right over here at about 5.30 is when we start to get sunrise and the sun just rises in the east and goes and sets in the west. You know all of this, but it's intuitively laid out on the disc. Right about eight o'clock is when it starts to set. And then these little areas on the top and bottom here are 12 degrees uh, nautical dusk, which is when you still have enough light in the sky to do stuff. And then I also added this golden hour right here. That's not a specific nautical thing. It's not a real scientific thing, but it is handy if you film content or if you live in Tennessee where there's so many trees that sunset technically starts kind of earlier. But uh, the solar disk here also shows the moon. You can see where the moon is at any time, when it's about to rise or when it's about to set, roughly how much time you have left with the moon, and it shows the phase of the moon. So you know uh, whether it is a new moon giving you no light, a full moon giving you lots of light, or somewhere in the middle. And my idea is that this right here on your watch face will begin to teach you stuff. It's, it shouldn't as much be a crutch as a teaching tool where you just kind of know roughly when sunrise and sunset is all the time and keep in mind what the moon is doing all the time because that's just good, solid field craft stuff. 
Now this is not the most innovative thing that you have ever seen. There's other watches that have 24 hour dials. In fact, Garmin makes a bunch of watches that have 24 hour uh, markings on the bezel. Some of their tactical watches, their aviation watches do this. So if you have one of those watches, you will notice that they actually put 24 at the top and 12 at the bottom. So there is an option in our watch face to flip the solar disc so that it lines up with the bezel. If that is how your brain works, then great. But for me, uh, I always think of <laughs> the sun as up in the middle of the day and on the other side of the world when it's down. So maybe Australians would like it the other way, but this is a way where you can set it the way that you want it to be. Now, another feature that some Garmin watches have, uh, their adventure outdoor style watches have north, south, east, and west on the bezel. If you would like to use that as a compass, there's another feature that you can turn on, which is a solar azimuth. It gives you a little icon, and if you point it towards the sun, then the north on your bezel is actually going to be pointing towards the north. Uh, pretty much all the Garmin watches have a built-in digital compass, so I don't know how often you would use this, but it's in there. All you got to do is turn it on. Now there's another feature which is a little bit watch dependent, but I think it's actually much more useful. And that is a night mode, a low light mode, a lumen mode that simulates glowing hands. And the reason for that is a lot of Garmin watches have switched to AMOLED displays. They actually emit light. And in this nice uh, watchmaking part of the shop right here, uh, it is not too bright. This looks uh, very, very readable. But as it gets darker, some of these displays struggle to get dim enough. And what you really want is a much more simplified display that will show you only the luminous hands and the things that you really want highlighted so that you aren't emitting too much light. And it's also kind of a handy thing for other watches. This is a much older watch with the always on uh, MIP display, memory and pixel display, and that is just a handy way to have a more minimalistic setup for this watch. And we also have uh, the watch face is backwards compatible to uh, like Phoenix 5 and some of the earlier uh, forerunners like this one, but we also have a Instinct version. The Instinct version has a really crisp, high contrast display, and uh, we put the watch face on there. We had to change it a little bit. I would say the screen on the Instinct is low enough resolution that you don't get quite as much benefit as you do on the newer watches uh, and the most newest watches, but it still is available to you. It's still functional and you still get that solar disc telling you sunrise, moon phase, etc. Now, even though we do have this backwards compatibility and we want to support the older watches and we want to support uh, the Instinct 2s, 2Xs and crossovers, etc. This watch face, T-Rex Quad, is a little bit more future facing. I believe that Garmin is leaning a lot more heavily into these OLED displays. Uh, and they're getting better and better with that technology. So the Descent, which is one of their diving watches, has a really good uh, luminance sensor. Uh, the Tactic 7 uh, comes in an OLED version and it gets dim enough that it's almost invisible and can be read under night vision. And then all of their fancy luxury watches, are like two or 3,000 bucks, they have OLED displays. So it's clear that that is kind of the future. I'm sure they'll keep uh, these memory and pixel displays around, but this is kind of the future, and we would like to help develop for these new displays, which are much higher resolution and emit light, better ways for working in the daytime and in the darkness. That's part of the reason that we wanted to make our own, but also just, you know, because it's cool. With this increased resolution, you can just have a little bit more on the screen. We've tried to come up with a really optimized way of doing that. So in addition to your step count, which is useful for like activity, uh, this actually is gonna show exact distances and you can use this as a proper pace counter. If you connect it to your phone, you got really good weather being displayed here. You can control what's in the four windows and get information that is really useful, like UTC time if you're doing radio stuff. Uh, it's just things that should be slightly more practical than a lot of the other stuff that is out there. Almost all these features exist. Uh, one piece here, one piece there, and other watch faces. We wanted to bring a lot of this stuff together into one and just really experiment with this sort of newer technology that Garmin is putting into most of their watches. Uh, there is an always on display mode that I think looks really good uh, in the T-Rex Quad. 
but it's pretty unnecessary. You really don't need an always on display when the watch turns itself on pretty reliably when you look at it and it saves a lot of power when it's off. So we support the feature. I don't really recommend the feature, but there's a bunch of things in here that you can get and experiment and play with across a bunch of watch faces. Uh, we've been tinkering with this a lot. It's got a bunch of input from a bunch of people here at the shop. There are multiple revisions and we're pretty happy with where things are at the moment. Uh, if you would like to tinker with this thing, it's available for a bunch of stuff and it's on the Connect IQ store. You can read about it on the T-Rex site. Uh, I will say that we've banged and beat on this thing for a while and now it is your turn. I would love to get your input on features that you want on your wrist as you do stuff. I'd like to figure out what input you have for how this stuff is displayed. I learn best by doing but also by making. And I would love to know what things we can learn from this type of information or this type of display or these types of capabilities on a device that is this small. So if you got a Garmin watch, go grab it and let me know in the comments here what you think. Uh, you can also report bugs and stuff on the thing. Now I should note that everything that I have mentioned here, all of the tools, all of the features, they all exist for free. You download the watch face, you get all that stuff for free. But for a couple of bucks, you can unlock the Pro version. The Pro version will let you change colors and customize things far beyond uh, what I am doing with, with my watches. Uh, there's a couple of reasons that we've decided to do that. One is True Delta uh, is doing all of the maintenance and upkeep and new features of this watch face. And the best way, uh, I think, to manage this watch face is just purely through the free market. If you guys like it and a lot of people are using it, then that will be the motivation to keep working on it. And if nobody likes it, nobody wants to use it, then his time and our time is better served doing other stuff. So that's the way that that is going to work. Now, if you're asking yourself, because you don't have a Garmin watch, if you should go out and buy one, I would say it depends. Uh, it depends on if you want a brand new one or if you want a used one. Uh, the run, the running watches, the forerunners uh, were recently refreshed. So if you want a brand new running watch from Garmin, there's a couple of great ones. And if you want a used previous generation model, now is a good time to get one on eBay. The Instincts and the Phoenixes and the others haven't been refreshed in a while, which means I personally would wait until there is a refresh, and then you can get a brand new one at full price, or you can get the previous generation a little bit cheaper than it is right now. It all depends on how long you want to wait. And I think there's going to be options for the glowing OLED display with the higher resolution. Uh, it's usually about three times higher than the same watch face in the old memory and pixel display. And I honestly don't know how to recommend one over the other to you. It really depends. If you want something that looks great in the bright sunshine, it's the memory and pixel one. And if you want something that's on all the time, uh, yeah, it's the memory and pixel one. But on the other hand, if you're gonna do map stuff, if you're gonna install the ATAC plugin on your watch, if you're gonna be doing a lot of really interesting stuff and maybe you need the extra resolution for some of those things, then you're kinda gonna want that, uh, that OLED version slightly less visible, slightly less visible in the sunshine, but they, they are getting better at it. That's kind of a bunch of firsts here. This is the first time that we have developed uh, a design like this that works on hardware like this. This is also kind of the first time that we've had this level of hardware in such a small package. Uh, this watch is not even one of the advanced outdoorsy tactical ones, but it's completely waterproof. I've been snorkeling in this thing. It has 10 days of battery life. It has a decent compass all the GPS capability and is a fantastic timepiece. Uh, there's other things in here that are just super handy like the silent vibrating alarm. There's just a whole bunch of functionality that is packed into this thing. And I would like to figure out how you guys are using it or will use it in the future and with a wash face that gives you access to a few more intuitive like daylight features and better pace count and stuff like that. I think we're gonna discover more ways that this can be used and more ways that this can do other stuff. And as the watches get smarter and they have more RAM and they have more sensors and they can do more stuff, things like ATAC plugins start to work a lot better. I think that there's just a lot of space for development in here. And at T-Rex Labs, we wanna experiment this is our first experiment and we want some feedback from you guys on how it works and uh, what you guys think of it. 
I was actually really looking forwards to getting a brand new Garmin watch with a bright, clean, high resolution, crisp OLED display. Uh, but honestly, uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but the watch face looks so good on this one that I think that I could keep it for another uh, couple of years. I, I might, I might do that. I realized that we plugged Garmin, specifically the Garmin inReach, in our video last week. Uh, and here we are plugging Garmin again. Uh, that's not entirely intentional, but I also don't care. Garmin is a very cool company. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I am pretty hesitant to recommend the most cutting edge, the most bleeding edge advanced technology. And the other, even just as an example, smartwatch companies, the Apple watches and the Google watches made by different folks, they're all kind of the same. They're all like miniature phones. They all have roughly the same technology, terrible battery life, and they all really need to connect to the cloud to do stuff. Garmin is just a very different tech company. Their home base is in Kansas City, not in Silicon Valley. They build devices that are rugged and have better battery life and simpler. And while there is a cloud component to this, you can upload all of your health data uh, to their website for backup and stuff like that. You really don't need to. And they're spread out across a bunch of different fields. So they make avionics equipment for aircraft and they make stuff for boats and they make stuff for fishermen. And then they do have that really good SATCOM set up for uh, relatively affordable entry-level folks like me. So I do appreciate Garmin and I like the fact that they're kind of holding the line on simple, rugged, resilient equipment at a time when the rest of the tech world is headed in this other direction. So even though I love Garmin and, you know, we sell these watches, so I should probably shill them a little harder. The fact is I'm recommending these watches simply because they are useful tools. They're not just cool because they show you your Instagram notifications. They actually have a lot of capability. The barometer on this one has predicted storms pretty well for me in the past. And even just being able to get exact time wherever I am and that sunrise and that sunset, a lot of this information that's on this watch is super valuable. Now, unfortunately, these watches are kind of expensive. So I would recommend that you do some research, figure out if you actually have the newest and the bestest. These things are rugged enough that I would take a used one, I bought this one used on eBay myself, over a brand new one most of the time. Just, it's only if you need some brand new feature like the EKG tracking or something like that, that I would go with a new one. Look at the used ones, and when new ones come out, there's often clearance deals on the old ones. So, you know, Think about it, do your research, figure it out, and uh, occasionally just swing by the T-Rex arm site and see what you see.